What's up guys, John here, and this is my three month review of the Nanook 935. All right, so to get into it, first of all, this is probably the most beautiful case I have ever seen. I mean, it defeats Pelican by miles. Now, it is a little bit scratched up. I've had it for three months. I tried to keep it really pretty when I first got it and slowly realized it's just not gonna happen, guys. This is a hard case. It's meant to protect what's inside. Everything inside looks phenomenal. And the outside does get a little bit beat up. That's what this is for, so let it happen, guys. This case is travel size. You can bring this on an airplane with you, so you don't have to worry about other people handling your luggage. You have all your camera gear safe with you on the plane, so this is a really great option for specifically destination wedding photographers because you're hauling around a ton of equipment, a ton of cameras. You got so much money in this thing, and you just want to have it with you at all times, and I don't blame you because I would too. So these locks are probably the best quality locks that I've ever seen on a case. I mean, it blows Pelican way out of the park on this one. They come up here like this and they latch down. You close it up and you can't pull it up. So to be able to open this thing, you do need to push this little pin right here, pull it up and then it latches and it comes right off. And you can latch it down like that so it doesn't get in the way either. So it does also have these little eye rings on here so you can um, lock this up if you want to. You can throw a little padlock on there or whatnot. Um, keep your gear safe. Uh, Nanook also sells replacement latches that have built-in locking. So that is an option if you want it. I'm not sure how much they run for, but I'll throw it up on the screen here for you and I'll link it in the description. It definitely is a good option if you're traveling a lot and you're leaving your case in the uh, car, back of your car. Someone tries to take it and they want to open it up. They can't. It's bolted shut. They're going to have to cut into this thing and at that point, they're probably just going to leave it behind. So the handles on this thing are actually really, really nice. This one up front snaps into place so it's not just flapping around in the wind when you're rolling this thing. Snaps right in, you can pull it out, stays out of the way. The top handle right here, which is probably my most frequently used handle, um, you grab this, you lift it up, and you let go and it retracts right back into itself. So that is super nice. So what I think is the best part about this case is the fact that it has this back plate on it, these wheels, and this handle right here. This stuff gets heavy. I have so much gear packed into here and I was so tired of my other hard case that just had a handle and I was like walking it inside of all these houses and lugging my gear around and it was back breaking. And this handle right here has been such a lifesaver for me. You push this little button in and you pull it right up. It's got two modes. One of them is like this and one of them is a little bit further, goes all the way out. Um, I'm about six foot and the top, the top one is pretty much the only one I use. I'm, I'm never really using this, um, this level, but it clicks really nice. No complaints here. So next up is these wheels. They are poly coated and they are super smooth. I actually replaced my desk chair with poly coated wheels from the stock original ones I had on there and it rolls so smooth now. I couldn't be happier with these wheels. When I'm going into a client's home and they have nice flooring, you know, I don't want something just rattling around, making a bunch of noise, you know, making the homeowners think that I'm scratching up their floors. You don't hear a thing when you're rolling this thing. It, it's so smooth. They've done a fantastic job implementing these wheels into design. They are great. So this right here is a pressure equalizer. So when you're going on an airplane, the pressure inside the case will be able to get released when you're up there in the sky. This is a sealed case, so it's water sealed and all that. So it's very, very nice to have that and not have to worry about things getting a little bit too steamy up in this guy. So going to the inside of this case, guys, I opted for the padded divider set. So there's a couple different options that you can choose when you're buying this case. You can do padded dividers, you can do a foam insert, or you can also do a custom Trek pack. It's a little bit more expensive, but it definitely looks nice. For me, the padded divider was the best option. It was budget friendly. And also you have the ability to customize this when your gear is changing throughout the year. Or if I wanna add something else to the arsenal, I pretty much have this thing set for everything I need for a shoot nowadays. I'm never really changing this up at all, but it is nice knowing that I can change this around as much as I want whenever I might add something new in here. 
Up top here, there is a piece of foam. It comes right out. I'm sure you could glue it down if you really wanted to. Um, it just pokes right up here in between these crevices. Uh, Nanook also offers a lid organizer for the top if you wanna switch out this foam panel. It is a very great option for people who have a ton of batteries, a ton of cables that they're lugging around and they don't wanna like cram it all into these spots down here, which is kind of the problem I'm having right now. I got a ton of little gimmicks here and there and I wish I did have it. It does come in a little bit expensive at around 160 US dollars. So I'll leave that up to you if you wanna go ahead and get it. Personally, I'll probably buy it here sometime. Um, it also has a cool feature where you pull it forward, you can slide in laptops and iPads and stuff like that. So that's just another great thing that you could do to this case instead of carrying around a separate bag for all your little cables, your iPad, your MacBook. You can keep it all here in one singular case, roll it, you're on your way. So this is the rubber seal that outlines the entire lid here. It's what creates that watertight seal so you don't have to worry about the outside elements getting in to your thousands of dollars of equipment. So this lid actually comes off as well. They have these little stainless steel pins that you twist and you pull right out. You're able to take this entire lid off if you want. So that could be great for someone like a DJ who has you know sound equipment in here and you want to pop this on a table, take your lid off and be able to have your stuff still somewhat protected just without a lid, without this lid kind of blocking the whole view. It's just gonna be out of the way and you still got your stuff in here how you customized it. So when I was organizing this, the whole goal was to keep everything very easily accessible. There are a couple things here and there that might be a little bit hard to get to, but they're things that I don't use often that I might pull out if I need it in like a one case scenario or whatnot. So over here on the top of the case, I have my main go-to camera. It's the Sony a7 IV, and the way I designed this pocket to hold it, you also have access to the SD cards very easily without popping the whole camera out. I just go like that and I got my SD cards, I'm able to put them right back in. I always keep my Sony um, 16 to 35 millimeter lens on here. It's what I use every single day as a real estate photographer. So that pretty much always stays on there. Right up above it, I have my SD card case. Very, very useful to have. Keep a couple SD cards in there. SD card reader for drones. And then right above that, I have the Ricoh Theta Z1. This sticks right up here, nice and protected. And then I have a couple extra lenses here. This is a 35 millimeter 1.4, one of my favorite lenses of all time. I also have an 85 millimeter Rokinon 1.4. This gets some really, really nice shots. I couldn't live without it. One of my favorite lenses, if I'm ever doing weddings or portraits, stuff like that. Got a couple extra drone batteries here stacked up onto each other. Got the drone strapped in right here of the Air 2S and it fits in here nice and snug. And right underneath that, I actually have my Rode video mics here, the ones that I'm using for this video, but that just goes right under the drone because I'm not using that every single day, but I am using it, you know, maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. Living on the coast, this drone is definitely flying every day, so that's why I keep it right on top here. It straps right in, keeps it nice and safe. Down here on the bottom right, I have the controller for it. The cable is right here to connect my phone. I've got a spare camera body right here. This is the Sony a7 III. So if I ever need a secondary camera angle, I'm able to pop this out, set it up, and have that side angle shot if we're doing an interview style video or something like that. Or if this camera happens to break, I have a spare on me. Keep a couple extra batteries here right next to it. They stay fully charged. I carry three on me at all times. And right above that, I have a phone gimbal. This is for when we're doing like vertical walkthrough tour videos, quick tours, stuff like that. Um, it's really nice to just be able to pop your phone on this and get some B-roll or whatnot behind the scenes, um, stuff like that. This is the DJI Osmo 5, I believe. Right underneath that, got some filters. Don't really use these as much as I should, but I have them here for every single lens. So I keep these here in the back. Got a camera blower, dust out my sensor. Have a battery bank here, so if something dies like the Ricoh Theta Z1 and I'm doing a virtual tour, I have this. This has been super helpful bringing this to every single shoot. Keep my trusty door stop here for those annoying doors that just seem to always want to close. Up here in this top pocket, got a couple little gimmicks, you know, stuff to clean off the lens again. Got an SSD for the computer. 
Um, got like an Allen wrench in here to tighten up tripods. Got a quarter in there to tighten up base plates. Um, you know, wall plugs, different cables, um, stuff that I might need that I don't use very often. Um, you know, I keep it in here with me. So that is my review of the Nanook 935. I hope you guys enjoyed and got some value out of this video. Let me know in the comments if you are going to be picking up this bad boy to protect your gear. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>